Christopher Mouse pulled the covers up high and snuggled them close round his head. There's no place that Christopher rather would be than ride in his soft feather bed. One morning, the postman peeked into his room. He knew he'd find Christopher there. The one mighty tooth that he blew in his flute made him jump wide awake in the air. I'm sorry I woke you, the postman explained, but I've something to tell it won't keep. I figured a fella could hear things awake much better than when he's asleep. They're having a carnival over in town, the regular annual affair, and every last field mouse for acres around has positively vowed he'd be there. There's gonna be popcorn, balloons will be free, and fireworks shooting at night. That was as much as the postman had told when Christopher vanished from sight. Please, Grandpa, say yes. Let's both of us go. Just think of the fun it will be. We'll both of us ride on the merry-go-round with you on the horse beside me. We'll go, said his Grandpa, but mind you one thing. We'll have to spend one night in town, so don't expect feather beds, fluffy like yours, or pillars stuffed full of goose down. Their journey was long, so they each packed a lunch, not planning to stop before noon. But Christopher's bag was so heavy, and, well, they ate several hours too soon. At last, they arrived at the edge of the town, Big banners hung over the street, and hanging on top of his granddaddy's back was Christopher Mouse with tired feet. Then after six bottles of cold soda pop and a hot dog with everything on, he thought he could feel just a slight stomach ache, but the tired in his feet was all gone. He rode 14 times on the merry-go-round, and would have stayed on there all night. Till Grandpa discovered the camel's two humps, El Christopher wedged in there tight. They both bought some taffy, the kind that you pull. They stretched it, they yanked, and they jerked. Till finally it looked like a real jumping rope. When Christopher tried it, it worked. He thought it was fun chewing real bubble gum. His mouth was as full as he'd dare. The very first bubble he blew was so big, it lifted him right in the air. The ride on the train was the most fun of all, until for a practical joke. The engineer went through a tunnel full speed, which covered their faces with smoke. They went to a place for some cold lemonade but the door to get in was locked tight. Hmm, now that's a strange thing, Grandpa thought to himself, to close up at this time of night. He reached in his pocket and pulled out his watch. It couldn't be that late, he knew. But his trusty old timepiece, which never was wrong, read exactly a quarter of two. Good gracious, said Grandpa, just look at the time. We'd better turn in right away. We'll head for the closest hotel in the town and try and find some place to stay. The first place they stopped had a sign on the door. We're sorry, no room here at all. They peeked in the window, though, just to make sure, and saw 20 beds in the hall. The folks that were staying at Mousy's Motel were packed in just like sardines. A few more were sleeping as best they could in the pocket of Farmer Brown's jeans. Not far down the street was the Egg Box Hotel. It boasted a full dozen beds. When Grandpa and Christopher added them up, their total was 12 sleepy heads. They walked and they walked and they looked and they looked, but there wasn't a room to be found. And it both of them catch just a terrible cold if they had to sleep out on the ground. Hold on now, said Grandpa. I'll think of a place. Let me get in my best thinking pose. 
So Grandpa sat down, crossed his little short legs, placed a finger alongside his nose. He stayed there a minute, a thinking real hard. Then his eyes twinkled wide with delight. And what's wrong with staying in Farmer Brown's barn? <laughs> we'll sleep in the hayloft tonight. The barn door was locked, but they didn't mind much. A knot hole worked out just as well. And up in the loft, Grandpa fashioned a bed just as good as in any hotel. The nice thing about beds made of straw, Grandpa said, is you can't get in wrong if you try. The head and the foot are exactly the same. Just jump in from any old side. But Christopher wasn't the type to just jump. It didn't look that good to him. He moved to what might have been close to the edge, then leaned back and sort of slid in. His head hit the bottom, he kicked up his feet, and straw piled up high in the air. And out of the mess came up, who do you guess? Yes, and with plenty of straw in his hair. The first thing he tried was to lie on his side. He had never seen straw stand that tall. It tickled his toes and it got in his nose till he just couldn't stand it at all. When I lie down, the straw sticks me right in the back, clear through my new BVDs. And when I sit up, my hay fever's so bad, I have to lie down or I'll sneeze. So it's sit up and sneeze or lie down and get stuck. If I stay here all night, I'll be dead. I hate this old barn and this old stickly straw. All I want is my own feather bed. Off a diddle, said Grandpa. It isn't that bad. And what's more, you're too big to cry. Then Grandpa leaned back on his own pile of straw. His face was turned up to the sky. I once heard a story about a straw bed and a field mouse no bigger than you. The story is mostly about the straw bed. They say every word of it's true. It happened one night many long years ago in the loft of a barn just like this. His mom had just tucked him inside the straw bed. His cheek was still warm from her kiss. The straw bed he slept in was one that he had made, and to him was a wonderful thing. And though it was built in a most clumsy way, he felt it was fit for a king. He lay there a while in the still of the night, for maybe an hour or so when all of a sudden, he thought that he heard the sound of strange voices below. They spoke very softly and sounded so kind that he wasn't afraid, not at all. He ran to the edge and he would have peeked down, but he just hadn't grown quite that tall. He listened for a moment to hear what they'd say. He wondered just who they could be then figured he'd better go back for his mom. She's taller than me. She can see. She didn't say what, but the little mouse knew twas an important thing that she saw. For he'd never heard anyone talk quite so fast or seen them pick up so much straw. It's cold down below, and they're on the bare ground. There's a place here and there even wet. Start gathering up every straw in the loft. They'll need every bit they can get. The little mouse didn't take time to ask who. He wasn't the type to just sit. If it's straw that they needed, it's straw they would have. And he'd get it there lickety-split. In no time at all, every straw in the loft had been carefully placed on the ground. But Mom had decided that wasn't enough. Some more would just have to be found. Friendly old cow had a small pile of straw and was just about ready to bite. But the little mouse grabbed it, just barely in time. The cow could go hungry tonight. 
Then all of a sudden, a mother hen woke to find that her straw nest was gone. She picked up the note that the little mouse wrote, which said he'd explain later on. He hoped that this last pile of straw was enough for whatever they needed it for. His mom looked below, shook her head and said no. They would still need a little bit more. The little mouse stood by the side of his bed. It was a lot to decide all alone. Here was the last bit of straw in the barn and the bed he had made for his own. His mom got so nervous, there wasn't much time. She had just finished sighing, oh dear. When the little mouse said, here's the straw from my bed and I hope there's enough of it here. The straw from the bed that the little mouse made soon covered the last bit of ground. Then both of them waited as still as they could be. His mom heard the sound. The little sound of a wee newborn babe. This was the first peek he'd had. The baby was sleeping on his pile of straw and don't think that he wasn't glad. He turned to his mom and was just going to ask if she knew when the baby would cry, when out of the night through the window above came a pathway of light from the sky. A new shining star in the heavens above, the brightest he ever had seen. And three men on camels were headed this way. He wondered, what all does this mean? He never did know on that night long ago his bed had been fit for a king, that Christ had been born on this first Christmas morn that voices of angels did sing. Grandpa moved over his own pile of straw, the pillow part stacked in a heap. He'd have to lay quiet. He wouldn't dare snore, for Christopher Mouse was asleep. <laughs>